Have you ever wondered what the fastest thing in the universe is? It's not a superhero. It's not a rocket ship. It's light. Scientists call this ultimate speed limit C, and it's a fundamental rule of our cosmos. Think of it as the universe's most important traffic law. Everything that exists, from the tiniest particles to the biggest galaxies, has to obey it. This isn't just a suggestion, it's a hard-coded feature of reality itself. When we talk about the speed of light we are talking about the absolute maximum velocity at which energy matter and any information can travel through space. It's the universe saying, this is as fast as it gets folks. So what exactly is light? It's a form of energy. You can think of it as a stream of tiny massless particles called photons. These little packets of energy are born moving at their top speed and never slow down unless they run into something, like a pane of glass, a drop of water. Because they have no mass, no heft to them at all, they are free to travel at this incredible mind-boggling velocity. This speed isn't just fast, it's the very definition of fast. It's the benchmark against which we measure everything else in the cosmos. Consider this. The universe has rules and rule number one is that nothing with mass can ever quite catch a photon. This speed isn't just for the light we see either. It applies to the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Radio waves that bring music to your car, microwaves that heat up your leftovers, x-rays a doctor uses to see your bones. All of these invisible forms of light travel at the exact same speed, C. They are all just different flavors of the same fundamental thing, zipping through the vacuum of space at an astonishing 299,792 kilometers per second. It's a universal constant, meaning it's the same everywhere, for everyone, no matter how fast you're moving. It's a true cornerstone of physics. It might seem strange, but it's what holds our understanding together, woven into space and time, without it cause and effect would break down into chaos. Let's put this speed into perspective, because the numbers are so big, they can be hard to grasp. Imagine you're in a car driving at highway speeds, 100 kilometers per hour, to drive around the Earth at the equator would take about 17 days non-stop. A commercial airplane flies about 900 kilometers per hour. It could do the same trip in about 44 hours. Now get ready. A beam of light could circle the planet more than seven times in a single second. Blink. Light has already lapped the Earth seven and a half times. That's not just fast, it's almost instantaneous on a human scale. The moon is 384,400 kilometers away. The Apollo astronauts took about three days to get there. Light makes that trip in just 1.3 seconds. When you look at the moon, the light you are seeing is 1.3 seconds old. The sun is 150 million kilometers away. Sunlight takes about 8 minutes and 20 seconds to reach us. If the sun were to suddenly vanish, we wouldn't know about it for over 8 minutes. We use this speed to measure the universe. Astronomers use light years instead of kilometers. A light year is distance, how far light travels in one year, that's 9.46 trillion kilometers. So a star 10 light years away means its light traveled a decade to reach us. Lightning versus thunder. You see the flash almost instantly. The thunder's sound crawls at about 343 meters per second. By counting the seconds between flash and boom, you're measuring sound catching up with light. Light sets our clocks across space, from Earth laps in a blink to seconds to the moon to minutes from the sun. So why can't we go faster than light? Why can't we just build a more powerful engine and break the cosmic speed limit? The answer is surprisingly simple. It has to do with mass and energy. Think about pushing a shopping cart. At first, it's easy to get it moving. But every time you pushed it faster, imagine the cart getting heavier. Soon you'd be pushing with all your might just to speed it up a little. As you got closer to a certain speed, it would feel like it was filled with concrete. Then like it was made of solid lead, it would become infinitely heavy. This is exactly what happens to objects with mass as they approach the speed of light. Einstein's theory of relativity, the faster you move, the more your mass increases. At everyday speeds it's negligible. Get close to light speed, say 90%, and mass increases dramatically. Pushing that heavier object faster needs huge extra energy. At 99.9% .9 of light speed you'd need almost infinite energy. Mass balloons toward infinity. An object's mass becomes infinite at light speed so it would take infinite energy to reach it. There is an infinite energy in the universe for a single object, it's impossible. The universe has a budget, reaching light speed is just too expensive. 
This is a fundamental law of physics, not an engineering problem. Only things without mass, like photons, can travel at light speed. Photons don't get heavier, they are born at the finish line. The cosmic speed limit also preserves cause and effect. Imagine sending a message faster than light. You could send a message back to your past self with winning lottery numbers. What if you told them not to buy the ticket? If you never won, you couldn't afford the machine to send the message. You've created a paradox. The universe avoids these loops by making C unbreakable. That keeps effects from happening before their causes and preserves the timeline. The speed of light doesn't just set a limit, it also gives us an incredible gift. A time machine to the past. Because light takes time to travel across the vast distances of space, when we look at distant objects, we are not seeing them as they are right now, we are seeing them as they were when the light first left them. The nearest star to our sun, Proxima Centauri, is about 4.2 light years away. When we look at it through a telescope, we are seeing the star as it was 4.2 years ago. We are literally looking into the past. This effect becomes more and more profound the farther we look. The Andromeda Galaxy is the closest major galaxy to our own, but it's still about 2.5 million light years away. The light hitting your eyes from that galaxy began its journey when our earliest human ancestors were first walking on Earth. When astronomers use powerful instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope to peer at the most distant galaxies, they are seeing light that has been traveling for over 13 billion years. They are getting a snapshot of the universe when it was just a baby, a mere fraction of its current age. Every telescope is a time machine. But what would happen if we could travel close to this speed? Time itself would change for you. This is another mind-bending part of Einstein's theory called time dilation. For a person in a spaceship traveling at say 99.5% the speed of light, time would pass much more slowly than for someone on Earth. You could take a five-year journey out to a nearby star and back, but when you return to Earth you would find that 50 years had passed. Your friends and family would be decades older, while you had aged only five years, you would have traveled into Earth's future. This cosmic speed limit, C, defines our place in the universe. It makes the cosmos feel unimaginably vast and old, showing us light from long dead stars and ancient galaxies. It makes us feel small, and yet, understanding this rule also makes us incredibly powerful. It allows us to piece together the history of the universe, the Big Bang, the present day. It sets the ultimate boundary for our future exploration, reminding us that while we can reach for the stars, some rules are simply unbreakable.